Okay, good morning. Welcome back for another week of pre-calculus material. We finished our chapters 1 and 2 tests last week, Friday and Thursday, and I'll be grading those here uh, starting today and tomorrow. I will hopefully finish them, um, if not today, and then they'll be ready for you by class on Wednesday. Uh, feel free still to stop by office hours tomorrow if you, if you have any questions or office hours on Thursday as well um, because we are getting started on material again. So we took a break for a week to study for the, the midterm, um, but uh, we're back at it, right? So before the midterm, we finished sections 3.1 and 3.2 on polynomials and their graphs. And uh, we're going to continue with section 3.3 after this announcement time here. Um, but the homework uh, was already due for 3.1 3.2. This Friday, we're going to have a quiz on that. So just keep that on your schedules. This Friday we're back to the regular quizzing schedule. Um, and this one is on 3.1 and 3.2. Next week we will have a uh, homework due for section 3.3 and 4.1 and 4.2, which we'll cover in lectures today. So in this first lecture I'll be just uh, talking about polynomial long division from 3.3, and then I'll make uh, two more videos for sections 4.1 and 4.2. We're just covering up through 3.3 in in uh, in this chapter three. We're not doing the the, la the latter section, so I hope that is okay. Don't be confused. We're just skipping ahead a little bit. So um, with that, I will go ahead and um, get started on section 3.3. And section 3.3 is on. Dividing polynomials. I always like to motivate this section with just a simple long division problem. Um, because what we're doing today is, is we're gonna take any two polynomials, which they can they can be complicated functions, right? Um, but we're gonna take any two polynomials and divide one of them by the other. It doesn't matter if we're dividing by a line or a quadratic or what have you. We're going to take any two polynomials, use one of them as uh, as the divisor, and we'll take one of them and use it as the um, uh, the uh, the dividend. Excuse me, uh, the word skipped my brain for a minute. Um, but the process that we're going to be doing is very much the same as just regular long division. We're going to be asking the same question that we ask in long division over and over, but instead of using numbers, concrete numbers, we're going to be using polynomials, which represent a whole a whole range of numbers for different inputs. Um, so it's like when you when you do a polynomial long division problem, it's like solving lots of division problems all at once. That, that's essentially the idea that we're going with here. Um, so to motivate this, uh, like I said, I'll be doing a, a long division problem, and I'm going to put some of the um, put some of the uh, terminology that we have uh, in here as well. So I'm going to go with this problem: seven divides three hundred eighty. Let's go three hundred and eighty-five uh, six. So 7 is dividing 386. So normally you would see this written as a fraction. So this is the same as this. Um, and using uh, using the language of like middle school math, this would be like 386 divided by 7. And the reason I say middle school math uh, it's because this is not really something that is like typically used beyond um, beyond high school or perhaps beyond middle school, eighth grade. Um, simply because this is this this type of notation here. It, its symbol literally is is a symbol for this, but it allows you just to write things on one line. Um, but there's a much more common symbol for that. It's just the fraction sign on its side because that's what we're really doing in division problems. We're actually 
looking at the quotient, which is the result of a fraction, or the, the decimal form of a fraction. Um, so this symbol literally means uh, we've got two spots, a top spot, and we've got a bottom spot, and in between them is this horizontal line. And this thing goes on the bottom spot, this number on the right, and this number on the left goes on the top spot. It, the symbol literally means this result, right? Okay, but this, this fraction can be written also, like I've drawn here below on one line, and it is, it is going to equal numerically whatever we get right here when we do this long division problem. Okay, so what do we call these things? What are these numbers called? Let me give you some vocabulary terms first. Okay, this number, 7, the number that you're dividing by, okay, the number that you are dividing by is called the divisor. It's a divisor. Okay, divisor. The number that you are, or that is being divided, we call the dividend. So this number, 386, is called the dividend. Okay, dividend. And the whole result. You can talk about the whole thing as well. Choose another color here. The whole thing all together is called a quotient. Okay, so the whole thing all together, the final result. And that, uh, like I said before, will be whatever number we result or we get uh, up here. Okay, so if you plugged it into a, a calculator and you got the decimal approximation of this of this fraction, you'd call that the quotient. Um, this, I think, remember we talked about different types of real numbers. There's the types of numbers that can be written as a fraction of two integers. We called them the rational numbers, and we gave them the symbol Q. That's because we're, we're dealing with quotients, right? The quotient of two integers is a rational number by definition, uh, so long as the denominator is not zero. So Q is the symbol for the rationals there, okay? So just some basic terminology there. Divisor, dividend, quotient, okay? Now, some other words here that we'll talk about. Um, We'll, we'll talk about them after we go through this. Okay, so when you do a long division problem by hand, you're you're sort of repeating this step by step process. It cycles through, and uh, just a few a few small steps. And the first step is is always the same. You look at the next digit that is available, starting from the left on the number underneath. You look at the next digit that's available. And then you ask yourself, what number times the divisor, what's the largest number multiplied by the divisor that is still smaller than or equal to that next available digit? In our case, 7 times 1 is already bigger than 3, so we, we have to stop this set of steps right there. We say 0 is the biggest number, that is, 1 multiplied by 7 less than or equal to 3. Okay, we, we can't actually start counting up. We need to stop right there. Um, and then what you do is you multiply these two numbers, the divisor times that largest number you found, to get 0. And then you perform a subtraction. Okay, and here we get 3 minus 0 is just 3. We repeat this now. We take the next available digit, which now is an 8, we attach it to, if you will, attach it there, what's left over from that 
first process's subtraction. And now we repeat the whole thing, asking ourselves what is the smallest number, sorry, what is the largest number such when multiplied by seven gives us a number less than or equal to our new result, now 38. And now it's not zero, now we can actually start thinking. Seven times one is seven, times two is 14, times three is 21, times four is 28, times five is 35. And if we go one bigger, we're at 42 to six. So five is the smallest number that when we multiply it by seven, we get a number less than or equal to 38. So I record that number here above the eight. I write the product of, of that number and seven down here. I do the subtraction. Okay, so then this is three. And then I rinse and repeat the process. I look at the next available digit. I attach it to what we have here. I ask myself, what is the largest number such that when I multiply it by seven, I get a number less than or equal to 36 now. We obviously have five again to give us 35. We perform the subtraction, we get one. And we try and repeat this process. And if we wanted to find a decimal approximation, what we would do is we would put a decimal point, put a zero. This is now the next available digit. We would bring it down, ask ourselves the same question for 10. That's point 0.1. And we would keep going. One, four, two, eight, blah, 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 blah. Everybody should have their sevenths memorized. It's a nice repeating decimal. Okay, um, point one four two eight. I think it's five seven. Okay, point one four two eight five seven one four two eight five seven. So if we don't want a decimal approximation at this point, and this is where I'm gonna stop this example after this, what we do is we call this the remainder. This one is the remainder. When you've run out of available digits, I should say explicitly available digits, we could always add those non-terminating zeros, right? Just keep a list of zeros going and then continue this process. So when you come out when you run out of explicitly available digits, you arrive at what's called the remainder. In this case, it's one. Now when you're in, in middle school, you learn to write the solution like this. Right? 55 remainder 1. What does that mean, though? Well, what that means is in this process of taking 386 divided by 7, it means you can break this up into two separate fractions. One of them, in our case 385 over 7, is equal to 55. The other one is equal to the remainder over 7. So you take your original quotient and you can split it into two quotients, one of which is a whole number, the other one is not. So this remainder is the numerator or the dividend of a new fraction added to the, uh, added to the whole value fraction that we had, um, and it is the remainder over the divisor. Okay, so this highlights, uh, this highlights a nice property of division. I'm 
gonna slide this over here. The nice property for division is that whenever you take some number, so I'll call it uh, divisor, uh, sorry, I'll take some number p, and I'll divide it by a divisor d. This is always, 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 always equal to some whole value quotient, right, something. It could be zero, right? It could be negative, it could be zero. Um, plus some remainder term divided by your divisor. So take any two numbers, perform the long division like we've done here. The whole number you get up here is this number, which we call Q, in this in in my uh, expression here. This remainder is this number I call R, right here. D is just our divisor seven. Okay. This is, you know, painfully visible right here on the right. If I just slide this right over, this was that whole number, right? 385 over 7 is that whole number. That's Q. And then 1 is our remainder and 7 our divisor. Uh, if we multiply both sides of this equation by D, we get sort of a, a nice alternative form of this. What is it? It is P, that's the dividend, right? the thing we were dividing by 7 before, that's our dividend. P equals Q times D, so that quotient, whole value part of the quotient, times your divisor, plus the remainder. So we have these nice two forms. Now we've got oops, we've got P over D is the quotient value, whole value, plus the remainder over your divisor. Okay, these are two really, really nice forms, uh, which are general forms for the way long division ends up. They always end up this way. In your homework questions, you'll be asked to sometimes write solutions in these forms. So that's the reason I, I bring it up to you. Um, numerically, right? Usually, when you plug things into a calculator, you just get uh, you just get some number as your result. Uh, like in this problem, we would have gotten fifty-five point, you know, one four two eight, etc., 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 or fifty-five remainder one. <laughs> Um, it, it, what it really is is 55 plus 1 7, whatever that decimal approximation is, right? That is written in this top form. How would I write it in the other form is the next question. Well, I would have P, our dividend, 386, is equal to Q, which is 55, times 7, which we know to be 385, plus 1. If I wanted to explicitly write it out, it's 55 times 7, plus 1, and that equals 386. These two forms really just highlight the similarity between division and multiplication problems. Right? Multiplication and division are inverse operations of each other. What we have here is something that is close to a multiplication problem. Close to. It's three, 386, right, is equal to a product plus 1. It's close to. There's a little bit of a, a, a remainder there, so it's not exactly a single product on the right. Okay. But what we're showing here is this relationship, the explicit relationship between division and multiplication. 
and it's kind of a it's kind of a simple idea. It's you know when you when you're di divvying out money or you're divvying out food or snacks or what have you to a group of people, if you're trying to ask yourself, you know, how many things do I give to each person to make this as fair or as even as possible, you know, you you might start with a big, you know, bag of things and and divvy them out and find that oh no, there's a little bit left over. You know, you've evenly divided them and now there's a little bit left over. Okay, so what do we do? You know, what can we do with that extra? That's what this is describing. That there's there's usually a, a, a piece of that small set of things you've got that can be evenly divided out, but there might be some little leftovers. Okay, and you can calculate, right, if you know the size of these uh, even groups that you're, you're passing out, and if you know how many even groups you're passing out, then this multiplication tells you how many things that will amount to, and then the addition of whatever number represents how many things will be left over that you still have yet to pass out, but which cannot be passed out evenly because there's an insufficient number of them, right? So I don't want to belabor that point too much. I, I, I trust that point is clear. Um, so we'll move on. Again, you'll just you'll be asked in homework to write your solutions in both ways, so I want to make sure that you've got those down. Okay. Okay. So this is polynomial long division today. This is not numerical long division. So why am I doing all this division with numbers? Because it's exactly the same. It's the exact same process for polynomial long division. So here we go. I'm gonna keep this on the left, and we'll do a polynomial long division on the right. Uh, the first example we'll do is six x squared minus 26 x plus 12 over x minus 4. Okay, so this, this is a division problem. It is a rational expression, but it's also a division problem. We could take this fraction, perform the long division process on it, and we could arrive at, you know, some, some quotient. That's going to look a lot like what we did in the last one, where we've got some kind of whole number result plus some fractional remainder. So how do we go about doing this? Well, whenever you see something like this, uh, what I would recommend is making that box. The box that we have on the left side, right, it looks like this. And what do we do? We just take the dividend, we put it underneath. We take the divisor, and we put it on the side. This line essentially transforms into this curved line, okay? Um, we're just gonna do away with it. So that fraction that you saw before is exactly equal to what we're going to uh, get here, up above this. So what did we do before? We kept asking ourselves the same question when we took new digits in. We asked ourselves, what was the smallest, well, sorry, the biggest number we could multiply our divisor by in order to get uh, the, the available digit set, you know, 3 or 38 or 36 um, out. But now we've got variables, right? So there's a slight modification here, but it's very small. We're going to look at, instead of digit by digit, we're going to look at term by term by term. So when, instead of taking the next available digit, we're going to take the next available term. Another very small mod modification here is, because we're dealing with variables, we need to be asking ourselves a question repeated over and over again of what, what term should we multiply the leading term of our divisor by? in order to get the next available term 
in the polynomial in the division uh, di the dividend. Before it was numbers, so it, just one number seven, right? Now we've got two numbers, x minus four. X minus four is still a number, but we're going to concern ourselves with just the x, and it'll it'll be clear why. So, first question. 6x squared is equal to some term, some factor, times x. What is that factor? What does it need to be? Well, 6x is what it is. 6x times x is x squared. So that becomes our first term up here. If we take 6x, and multiply it by x, we get 6x squared. If you always go about this process asking yourself the leading term times what gives us this first, this next available term in our dividend, you're going to make sure that that term always cancels out through the exact same subtraction process that we've got. That'll be exampled here. So 6x times x is 6x squared. So if we were to perform a subtraction, this 6x squared would cancel out. But, like I said before, we don't just have an x. We've got an x minus 4. So we need to multiply the 6x now times both x and minus 4. So that's minus 24x. When you perform the subtraction, you need to be careful. You subtract this whole thing. Does that make sense? So we have this whole thing here. If we multiply the first term by 6x, we get the same term that we have here. That's what we want. If we multiply the second term by 6x, we don't necessarily get this, but that's okay. We'll take care of that in the next step. It was just like in this, you know, this seventh, the division by seven here, we couldn't handle the 3 right away. So what did we do? We took down the 8. Now we can handle the 38 with a little bit extra. We don't need to handle everything. We need to handle most of it. <laughs> 35 of it. Right? We need to handle 35 of the 38. We just need to make sure we keep whittling it down until we run out of available digits. So we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to keep whittling this down until we have no nothing available. So we perform the subtraction. We of course get zero here by design. And now tw negative 26x minus a negative 24x is negative 2x. Okay. Okay, and, and there's an available digit. There's an available term now, plus 12. So we bring that down. And we ask ourselves the same question now. This leading term, x, times what factor, which will be our new term up above, gives us negative 2x. Negative 2x is negative 2 times x, so that's a pretty simple one. So that's our new term, negative 2. So now the next step. We multiply that negative 2 times our divisor. We get negative 2x plus 8. And then we perform the subtraction. These cancel out, of course. These do not. We're left with 4. There's no terms available anymore. There's nothing left. We could, of course, like add zeros if you want to keep going, kind of like what we did before. We could try something like that, but there's there's no point. We've arrived at the remainder. Four is the remainder. So just to highlight this process again, just like in long division, we take a term, we ask ourselves this question. What can we multiply this leading coefficient by to get that term? Sorry, this leading 
uh, this leading term by to get that. We write that factor up here. We multiply that factor through the divisor and subtract, just like in long division. We, we take whatever's left and the next available term. We repeat the process. We ask ourselves, what factor do we need to multiply the leading term of our divisor by to get that? We write that up here. We multiply the, our, our divisor through by that. We perform a subtraction. We keep going. Right? If there were seven terms in this polynomial, we would just keep going, doing that process over and over and over again. Once we arrive at this point where there's no terms left to bring down, we've reached our remainder. So this is R. What do we do with that? Just like before, we're going to take that divisor, in our case, positive 4. So I'm going to put plus 4. And it's going to be divided by our divisor, x minus 4. This is our quotient. Okay, that fraction we had earlier, 6x squared minus 26x plus 12 over x minus 4. It is numerically identical to this. They are exactly the same thing. If you plug in an x over here and calculate it out, you're going to get the exact same result if you plug it in on the left. Okay? All right. So, in the two forms that we had before, what do we have? Well, one of the forms is, is right there staring at us. One of the forms is exactly how it's written. Let me just move this slightly. Okay. So this is in the form P, which is now a polynomial of X, over D, which is now a polynomial of X, is equal to Q of X, this is a polynomial of lesser degree, plus our remainder, which may very well be a polynomial of a variable, although there's no variable there. That's r. Our 4 is r of x, divided by d of x, our divisor. So that was the first form we looked at. But there's an equivalent form. Remember, it's it's this form. I'm erasing this. You can go back in the video if you want. I need more space. There's an equivalent form describing the same the same equality where we've multiplied through by the divisor. So what does that form look like in this problem? We've got p of x, which is 6x squared minus 26x plus 12 is equal to q of x times d of x, that's our divisor, plus this fraction times d of x, which is x minus 4. So we're going to take this fraction and multiply it by x minus 4, and what do we get? 4. Okay. So that's the other form. p of x is equal to q of x times d of x plus the remainder, r of x. It's the other form. So again, sometimes in the homework you'll be asked to um, write your solutions in this form.
which seems a little counterintuitive, you know, but they're more or less asking you still to find the quotient. You know, you, you, you're given a polynomial long division problem like this one, and you're asked to put it in this form. Well, you still need to find the division result. You still need to find the remainder. Now you're just writing that as a product with a sum instead of just a, you know, I guess the typical form up there. Okay, that is polynomial long division. This works no matter what two polynomials you've got. So I'm going to do one more example, which is a little more complicated, but it's still not so bad. Okay, this one is this one is 8x to the 4th plus 6x squared minus 3x plus 1 all divided by 2x squared plus, excuse me, minus x plus 2. So I can take any polynomial x to the fourth is fine, right? A fourth degree is fine. And divide it by any other polynomial. It doesn't have to be a line like x in the last one. It can be x squared, a quadratic. It can be anything else. The process doesn't change. Okay, so the process remains the same. What we do is we take the numerator, the dividend. We make a house for it. <laughs> we take the divisor and we just put it outside here like that but let me give you sort of a, a, a all right, the lang in the language of today a pro tip when I look at that dividend I notice there's a term missing there's no x cubed term right to make your life easier in problems like this put it in there But don't change the problem. Put it in there by adding 0x cubes. Right, we haven't added anything. We've, we've just added 0 times something. So there's nothing new that we've added. But this is just going to make your life a little easier. And you'll understand in a few minutes why. So, we ask ourselves the first question to get started. Here's our first available term. So we ask ourselves, that term is equal to what times our leading term here? 2x squared. Okay. What do we multiply? 2x squared by, excuse me, this is a 4, to get 8x to the 4th. Well, we need a 4 because that 4 times 2 is 8. And we need an x squared because that's the x squared times x squared is x to the 4th. So here, over this, we're going to put a 4x squared. Okay. Now we multiply through. We've got 4x squared times 2x squared. That is, of course, 8x to the 4th. 4x squared times minus x is minus 4x cubed. And that's why adding the 0x cubed is was going to help us later, because now we've got the x cubes lining up. If I had left the x squared where it was before, this x cubed would be right below an x squared, and that subtraction doesn't, you can't do that. You subtract from x squared, x squared. You don't subtract cubes from x squareds. Anyway, I continue. 4x squared times 2 is 8x squared. Okay, then we do our subtraction. 0 here. Now 0 minus a negative 4x cubed is positive 4x cubed. 6x squared minus 8x squared is negative 2x squared. We'll bring down the next term, negative 3x. But 
the next question doesn't isn't impacted by that. The next question again is to get this 4x cubed what do we need to multiply our leading term by? Okay. In this case, 2 times 2 is 4, and x times x squared is x cubed. So the next thing we have is positive 2x. So we multiply through 2x times our divisor. 2x times 2x squared is 4x cubed. 2x times a negative x is minus 2x squared. That's nice. 2x times 2 is 4x. Then we perform our subtraction. 4x cubed minus 4x cubed is 0. Negative 2x squared minus a negative 2x squared is 0. Negative 3x minus 4x is negative 7x. We'll bring down our next available term, the 1 up there. Ask ourselves the same question. Negative 7x is equal to what times 2x squared? And now we kind of have an issue. Because we, we're not going to have a, a whole power. Right? Oh, we'll have a whole power, but it, it's more of an integer power. Right? We could handle the, the number. What, what number times 2 gives you negative 7? What's well, negative 7 halves? That's not a problem. What about the variable? It has to be 1 over x. We need one of these x's to cancel, to bring us from a, a quadratic to a line. So when you arrive at this point in polynomial long division where the result here has degree less than this, negative 7x is degree 1, 2x squared is degree 2. When you arrive at this point, everything that's left over is your remainder. Okay? That's it. That's the remainder, the whole of it. So we do plus negative 7x plus 1 divided by our divisor. 2x squared minus x plus 2. Okay, that is the one form of this division problem. We've got our p of x right there, equal uh, divided by d of x equals q of x plus r of x. That's why I said earlier it could be a polynomial. The remainder can be a polynomial. That's example here. Before we had a whole number. Now we don't. Anyway, r of x divided by d of x. In the other form, it would be like this. 8x to the fourth. At this point, we don't care about that zero, so we're going to forget it. Plus 6x squared minus 3x plus 1. equals, so that's p of x, equals uh, q of x times d, 4x squared plus 2x times d of x, which was 2x squared minus x plus 2, plus the remainder, negative 7x plus 1. Okay, that's the other form. So if you're asked to put it in that form, you still have to find the quotient. 
So you still need to find Q and the remainder, right? So that is polynomial long division. That is the exact process, the exact algorithm that you go through no matter what the polynomial you're dividing is, no matter what the polynomial is you're dividing by. It works for any rational expression, any of them. It is a bit tedious. It is a bit long-winded. That's why it's called long division. <laughs> um, there's a there's a faster version of it. Um, something that you might have noticed is that the what we really care about in many of these cases is just the coefficients. We don't really care about um, we don't really care about the powers of x. We just care about the coefficients. Um, so there is a process which eliminates writing down all of these variables. Just We can just forget them. And there's a, a way of writing this down that is much more compact uh, so that um, so that we write less in less space. And this is called synthetic division. But beware. This only works, I'm typing as I talk, that's why I'm talking more slowly, sorry. Beware, this only works when the divisor is a line, okay? This only works when the divisor is a line. So that's like ax plus b. That means we can't use this process. We couldn't use this process in the last problem we did. We were dividing by a quadratic. We were not dividing by a line. But the first problem we did, we could have done it like this. Okay? We could have. So let me let me give you another example. This one will be uh, synthetically divisible. So it's going to be x minus 3 as our divisor, and we're going to divide 2x cubed. I can do better than that. Minus 7x squared plus 5. Now remember, I said earlier to make our lives easier, let's add a 0x in there if it doesn't exist. I'll just fill in the gaps. So this is a long division problem that we could do through long division. And it's not too difficult. It'd be 2x squared there, and we get 2x cubed minus 6x squared. Do our subtraction. 2x squared, 2x cubed minus 6x. OK. OK, and then we get 0 here, and we get negative x squared there. We then say, oh, it's negative x. We brought down the next 0x already. Uh, we get we get negative x squared there. We get positive 3x here. We do the subtraction. We get uh, nothing and negative 3x. OK, negative 3 then, after bringing down the 5. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. So this is negative 3x multiplying through plus 9. Do our subtraction. There's nothing left, so this is the end of it. Um, this is negative 4. Okay. The remainder is negative 4. So what can we do here now? We can say exactly what this is. It's it's that. That's the entire result. Okay. How do we do this synthetically? What is this synthetic thing? So, when you have a division problem like this, where you've got a line, it has to be a line. 
AX plus B, something like that. It cannot have squares, it cannot have cubes, it can't have anything but an X to the first power. Beware. <laughs> okay, I hope I've made my point. Well, what's the zero of that line in this problem? That's the first question you ask in a synthetic division problem is what is the zero there? Well, the zero is three. If I plugged in three for x, I would have three minus three, which is zero. So in a synthetic problem, what you do is you look at the zero of that divisor, and you write it like that. You just, you just write it there. And then what you do is you write all the coefficients of your polynomial down right next to that. So two x cubed, negative seven x squared, zero x. You cannot forget that here cannot forget that. 5 for constant. So what is this? This was, this was the coefficient on our x cubed. This is the coefficient on our x squared. Coefficient on our x. The coefficient on our x to the 0. We're just writing coefficients down. Those are really the only things that matter in this whole subtraction process. We don't care that there's an x squared or an x cubed. We're just subtracting coefficients from common terms. Okay, and then the common way to write this is with a division symbol flipped upside down. Okay. Uh, when I learned this, I was learned I was taught to make this twice as tall. This is not how your book does it. Your book makes it the same size, and then it writes another line here. Okay. All right. So here's the first process. Uh, you ask yourself, um, first, you drop down this 2, then you ask yourself this question, what do I need to multiply this 2 by, right, that, 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 oh, excuse me, excuse me, we asked ourselves in the previous question, what are we going to multiply this x by? to give us the 2x cubed, it's 2, right? That's why we wrote the 2 down there. Okay. In the next process, in the next step, we arrived at this 6. How did we get that? We took the 2 times the 3. So that's what we do here. These two multiplied together give us this next one. Okay. So again, at the beginning of a long, the long division problem, we, we asked ourselves the line with coefficient 1 multiplied by what gives us the 2x cubed? Well, it's obviously the 2. So that goes straight down. And then when we foiled through, we multiplied through, we got this 2 times the 3, and that gives us the 6 right here. It was a minus 6, right? but we ended up adding it because of the cancellation of the negative signs. So now what do we do? We just add this column together to give us the next number here, negative 1. How do we get the next number? Again, multiply these two numbers. We get a negative 3, which is the result here of this plus 3 being subtracted. What do we do now? We, we add the 0 and the negative 3. How do we get the next number here? We just multiply these two numbers. It's negative 9. And that corresponds to the subtraction of this positive 9 here. Okay, and then 5 plus negative 9, we add this column together just like we added this column and this column together to get these numbers. We get negative 4 here. And you should see a, a, a direct correlation here between these numbers and what we've got up here. 
2 x squared minus x to the first minus 3 x to the zeroth, which is a constant, so we'll leave it, minus the remainder. Well, so plus negative 4 over the quotient, uh, sorry, the divisor, which we know is x minus 3. So synthetic division is, is this process that you can do very quickly. Um, when you're dividing some polynomial by a linear factor, by a linear uh, divisor, okay? First you solve for the zero, then what you do is the exact same process you saw here. Bring this first one down, multiply, put that there. Add this column together, multiply, put that here. Add this column together, multiply, put that there. Add this column together, you've got it. These numbers are now the coefficients on the one smaller power. So we had this two was under the x cubed. So the two is the coefficient on the x squared. These are the coefficients on the one power smaller terms in your quotient. If there is a remainder, if you don't get zero here, you write that number over your divisor. That's synthetic division. If you do that four or five times, you will really appreciate it. Okay? You really will. So that is it. That's it for section 3.3. Um, that was a bit of a longer, a, a really long uh, lecture, but it's long division, what can I say? Uh, from a practical point of view, long division is, is preferable to synthetic division from a practical point of view. If you learn one or the other, if you, know, if you only had one time enough to study one of those two processes, long division or synthetic division for polynomials, please study long division. Because synthetic division is just a, a, a succinct way of doing long division. And it's only a succinct way of doing division by lines. Whereas long division, the process you learned first here, that applies to any rational expressions. Any of them. Not just division by lines. So it is a much more uh, powerful uh, process than synthetic division. But that's it. I don't want to take any more of your time. That was too long. So I hope that helps, and uh, I will see you in a little bit for the next lecture on section 4.1, skipping ahead right into the next chapter. Uh, that'll be on exponential functions. So things are about to get uh, really, really fun here. So I'll see you next time.